And you know, really I think the most important thing to understand about us is that we are a co-op and we're owned by our members. And this lets us take a different perspective on how we do everything about our business, but especially content. Um, unlike, I think, some private or publicly owned entities where we're very worried about quarterly earnings and, and annual performance, we have the luxury of looking a little bit further out. So we can look at you know, what's good for our members this year, five years, 10 years, 100 years, what's good for the environment, what's good for our public lands that's gonna keep people in our membership out there and getting outside on a regular basis. And so we can think a little bit more about not just what's gonna drive the business, but what's gonna keep our membership healthy. And let, let's just do some cool things, like this Smorito, uh, which if you don't know what it is, you should Google it, because Smoritos are awesome. But we've actually been doing content marketing for a long time, really since 1997 before it was cool. Uh, but you know, we launched REI.com in 1996, and, and just about six months later, we had our first kind of body of how-to content hit the website, starting with buying guides, um, but also some activity-based content. This is a screenshot from our Backpacking 101 course. Uh, a lot of uh, buying guides for our different categories, but also stuff on planning your first trip and route finding and, and some cool stuff like that. And we continue to iterate over the last 20 years. Uh, it's evolved, we've added more images, we've added stronger CTAs, we've added better flow and scannability to our articles, but the concept still basically remains the same, which is hold an awesome set of how-to content in a single library, uh, and we've really pivoted in the last couple years to think about how can we become like a Khan Academy or a lynda.com of outdoor education? How can we be a one-stop shop if you want to learn to rock climb, if you want to learn to stand up paddleboard, you know to come to REI and we've got your back. So this library is made up of about 500 articles. Uh, we've got a lot of buying guides, that's some of our most successful content. So how to choose a backpack, how to choose a tent. Uh, checklists are also super popular. What should I bring camping? What should I bring my first time rock climbing? We've been building more care and repair uh, and maintenance content. Sustainability is one of our core values and helping our members extend the life of their product and figure out how they can get a little bit more out without having to buy a new one uh, or take it somewhere is super important to us to minimize our impact on the environment. And then lastly, I think this is where we've really grown in the last year in particular is, you know, if you're going rock climbing for the, for the first time, we wanna help you figure out what you need to know that first time. We also wanna paint a path of progression so you can also read subsequent articles, watch subsequent videos, and become an intermediate all the way to expert, uh, an expert level rock climber. So that's been kind of our historical perspective is focusing on expert advice. But three years ago, we launched a, a new blog called The Co-op Journal. Uh, and among a lot of other great, amazing content, inspirational stories and, and other uh, types of content, we've, we've been sprinkling in utility content We've got DIY things like uh, how to build an Adirondack chair out of retired skis, um, how to build a, a soda can stove is coming up, I think, next week. Um, we've done some hacks and tips content, location guides, so helping people find the places where they can recreate, uh, and then product reviews, especially for, for things, uh, REI brand products and, and exclusive products that you can only find at REI. So to take a, a meta step back, really, why, why invest in how-to content, and really, your customers have questions. Somebody in your organization probably has an answer. And really, it's, it's just that easy. And in fact, that's the end of the presentation. No. <laughs> just kidding. But uh, Google does have this nice framework. They call it micro moments. But the basic gist of this is that customers have a lot of questions, right? And, and it can seem almost overwhelming at times. They've bucketed it down into a few different groups that they've identified in, in you know, search engine traffic. I want to know. I want to go. I want to do. I want to buy. But I think it's a useful, uh, a useful framework to start thinking about where you should really dig in and start your content creation, what's most important to driving your business forward. <coughs> so for us, we started really with that conversion process. Like I mentioned, 1997, we started with buying guides. Um, that was an easy sell. You know, I've got people showing up at our website. What size backpack do I need? What kind of backpack do I need? How big of a backpack do I need? We wrote an article about it, and we drive a ton of traffic through that. And it's really nice because it's tied so poorly to our conversion program. So here's like an example of, of one of the graphics associated with those articles, but you know, really from a, a written visual and video uh, perspective, trying to answer people's questions and, and educate them and inform them uh, on the topic from which they've come to learn about. Um, some other things to consider as you look at kind of I wanna buy content, buying guides, uh, product comparisons. We haven't done a lot of this yet, but interested in doing more. 
uh, product reviews, you know, there's a lot of sites, it's a competitive space, but um, as experts on your product, you, you know, have a good chance of ranking for review keywords. And then lastly, like identifying just those common questions people have as they're kind of in the consideration, research phases of their purchase cycle, uh, building content that kind of answers those questions. So here's some examples of the way we do this at REI. Um, uh, aforementioned gear review, uh, we rank for the keyword Brooks Mazama review uh, with this piece of content. The middle, the middle one is, is an example of one of our uh, buying guides uh, for keywords like how to choose a buying guide, what types of mountain bikes are there, what size mountain bike do I need? And then lastly, and this is one we've actually just started exploring, but um, I think yesterday I got new research from Google that keywords containing best uh, include and uh, have, have ridden, risen 80% in the last two years. Um, so really dialing in and figuring out how we can tackle that. And I don't know if anybody was in Will Reynolds' presentation uh, yesterday, but he made the point too that you might just search backpacks or hiking boots on Google, and it's actually returning a bunch of results that are best hiking boots, best backpacks, because it's identified how many customers are out there that want that kind of information. Developing content specifically for that, even better. So once you kind of canvas this I want to buy moment, and that is a lot of work, to be honest, uh, you know, the next area we started focusing on is kind of post-purchase help. So you, as a customer, now have the product in your hands, you're out using it. How can I follow up and answer the questions that you have about using it, about taking care of it? Um, care and maintenance is one avenue here. Uh, gear repair is another one. How to use guides, especially around technology. You know, I just bought a, a new fitness watch, um, and I mean, I'll be honest, REI didn't have the content I was looking for, even Garmin didn't have the content I was looking for, but DCRainmaker.com had about 20,000 words on it, and super helpful, screenshots, uh, everything, and, and it helped me way more than the manual figure out how to use this thing. Uh, and then lastly, like product tips, you know, like um, I buy a new tent every couple years, and there's always just little clips and loops and stuff. I have no idea what those are for, and I work at REI. So how can you help demystify your products and demystify the things that are so obvious to the people who have developed the product, but maybe are not being, or being underutilized by the people who are actually using the product? Other things that we've, uh, other ways that we've tackled this, we have a three-part series on tuning skis, everything from the basics that you might do it, normally do at home, like waxing, to more advanced things like base, base repair and edge work. Uh, you know, some of this can, can feed back into that conversion cycle. We have an article on how to set up your new mountain bike. And some of it's fit, setting sag on a full suspension bike. Uh, other things are, what are the first things you should upgrade? Is that your saddle, your tires, components? Uh, but kind of getting people back in and recognizing that once they make a large purchase, they're going to continue to convert on some smaller items down the road. And then lastly, repair, I think, has been a super successful area for us. But, you know, so w all of us have kind of a customer journey that we know our customers are on. And, and at REI, we look at it kind of by two slices. There's, there's the purchase journey, you know, where people are doing their research and awareness, consideration, purchase, and evangelism. But we also... Um, have more of a larger customer journey on outdoor activities. So knowing that people spend a lot of time thinking about what they want to do, getting inspired, getting stoked for the upcoming ski season. Then they move into, well, what trips am I actually going to do? What do I need? Uh, where am I going to go? Who's going to go with me? All the way to actually doing the activity and then sharing things out on social. And, and the great thing is, is that there actually are places to plug in how-to content everywhere in that kind of customer journey. So while we started with things that are really close to that, like, research purchase side of the customer journey, we've begun really building out things so that we can talk to our customers and be relevant in the stages far away from the purchase consideration. So we know that people are turning to search engines or turning to other sites to figure out in the middle of the summer camping recipes to impress my friends. So now we've started building recipe videos. It's not really related to a purchase, but it is a place for us to inject ourselves and kind of start that and continue that relationship with our customers. I mean, probably for almost every industry in here, we know that people are gonna have X number of touch points before they actually convert on your site. And when you can actually start answering questions earlier and earlier, you get an opportunity to set and start that sequence of touch points earlier on. So here's a quick example of one of the recipe videos that we've been putting out. We put out about 10 of these. I don't know why the sound's not, there we go. We put out about 10 of these. They've been super successful uh, on social media and on YouTube. Um, but similarly, we're able to like kind of package them up and create blog posts that are like, best camping recipes for a family, best vegetarian backpacking recipes, and some other more SEO-driven plays, so we're getting multiple uses out of the same piece of content. Also, full apologies, I forgot my session was at 11 o'clock right before lunch, putting a recipe video for mac and cheese, so if you 
you guys need to go and get a snack, that's cool. Cool, so, you know, and even there, it's not totally detached from product, right? Those are all things you can buy at REI. There's some surprise items that people might not think to bring, like a little squeeze tube for ketchup, so, or for hot sauce. Uh, we've also worked on location guides, again, an opportunity where people are researching and planning their trips. They're not in that buying mindset, but we can be there to help them. Uh, we've done activity hacks and tips, uh, and then again, skills and knowledge has been a big area of growth for us. Here's one of those uh, hack articles. We've got 22 camping hacks from REI experts. So one pro tip, if it's a cold night, boil some water, throw it in your Nalgene, stick it in the bottom of your sleeping bag, you're gonna be cozy all night. I started doing that last summer, it, 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 mind blown. <laughs> uh, the middle one is uh, Colorado's 10 best mountain bike rides, you know, really dialing in on, on some SEO keywords and some priority markets for us, but thinking about how can we curate, so, so I guess to step back, uh, a couple years ago we bought a series of sites called Adventure Projects that includes hiking project and trail run project and mountain project and um, some really cool community sourced trail information. Uh, we've got a map, uh, downloadable apps, people can leave trip reports, there's forums, uh, which is awesome. But it's also a little bit, uh, you know, everything is potentially out there. So we've started curating some of those top trails by location and serving them up on the blog in a little bit more of a editorial nature and seen a lot of great success out of those. And then lastly, this is kind of our, our bread and butter skills content, but like how to belay, you know, uh, how to get into lead climbing, how to practice falling, um, some things of the, the basic skills you need if you're gonna get interested in, in an activity. And for anyone who was here uh, uh, last year to hear me speak, I talked about long form content and kind of the uh, evolution towards small, short form content, but making the case that we need to tell longer stories. And, and one of the topics I brought up in that speech was really thinking about how we can make our content work harder for us. We invest a lot in writing, so this is an example of one of our articles. These things are often 10,000 words, and the guy who wrote it at the beginning of this, you know, it wasn't necessarily a, a backpacking expert, right? He had to go invest hours of his time talking to our store associates, to our vendor partners, to our merchandising teams, to our outdoor school instructors. And he had to become kind of a subject matter expert. So it's a bit of a shame if all we get out of that, all that investment that we made as a business in, is one article. So we really try and figure out how can we take that knowledge that's now bottled up in one person and start spitting out more and more content. So that article also led to uh, our most successful organic Pinterest piece of content ever, which is a series of tips on different ways to <clears throat> lace your hiking boots. Uh, a little bit of a fun one on the, on the right there, but super essential to learning how to backpack, how to poop in the backcountry. We, uh, you know, this one is in the article, but it's also just a little fun like social asset too. Um, and the, the thing I like about that, that example, um, aside from it's an amusing topic, um, is that we were able to um, create a design element for our articles. So instead of having to write 500 words talking about this topic, it's like a graphic that can be digested in 10, 15 seconds and people can get the concept and move on. And then lastly, you know, making sure that we, we craft our videos based off of our articles, that we're talking about things in the same way, that they're working uh, synergistically so that um, we're not necessarily duplicating the topics and we're leaning on video where video is the best way to teach something and writing is the best way to teach, you know, we're using words for that. So moving on a little bit, you know, those are examples of how we're doing it, but I think probably the question that you guys have is, that's great, but how do you even know what topics you wanna cover? So uh, moving on to a little bit more about content ideation, the first place that we like to start is with people who interact with our customers. I know it sounds kind of a no-brainer, but we talk to our GreenVest associates in stores, we talk to our customer service reps, we talk to our merch partners, uh, outdoor school instructors, and a whole lot of other folks. We also look at the data that we have. Uh, Google Search Console is a great tool if you don't know about it. It's for um, webmasters and SEOs that um, Google provides for free uh, that shows you kind of the keyword data to some degree of accuracy uh, that's coming to your site. And then if you have budget, you know, using tools like SEMrush is only, I think, 70 bucks a month. Um, or, you know, we also have more enterprise level uh, SEO tools like um, Bright Edge and, and Search Metrics are examples of those. Uh, so once you start kind of looking through all this data that's already at your fingertips, the first thing I like to do is really get back to your journalism roots and start looking at who, what, where, when, why, how, the questions that people are asking, and, and there's really some amazing stuff in there. So this is kind of an example of, of the stuff that I would pull from Google Search Console. What I would do is uh, you know, go to our expert advice library, and, and really my goal here is to find what questions are people asking, and they're coming to aria.com already, but then I filter by their av our 
average rank already. So we're the ones where we're actually not holding positions one, two, or three. Maybe we're nine, maybe we're 15. And that's a clue that either A, we're not optimized enough, um, or B, we're actually answering a question deep within some other article and, and ranking okay, but perhaps we should be investing in a new piece of content dedicated exclusively to that topic. So there's some like good little nuggets in here, how to transport a kayak without a rack, uh, how to read a compass, um, what to do if you see a bear while hiking, which is great, yeah. If you have that problem and you're Googling it, maybe, <laughs> maybe it's uh, time to take a different course of action. Uh, another, another cool thing to look at is like um, some of the other kind of shopping related queries that are out there like verses, keywords that contain verses or best or reviews, things that we know are trending in terms of how users are using search. Those are what I would consider kind of the basics of how we start looking at ideas, but there are some things you can do to take it to the next level. 